many a times we assume or predict the things on our observations like we say that there's a 50 50 chance of raining now or that is there's a hundred percent chance of winning the match by team a or there are 99 percent chances of passing the exam and so on you know but do you know this everything is some or the other related to math this guessing or this prediction in math is known as probability in recent years probability is used in economics biology physics genetics and of course knowingly or unknowingly we use it in our day-to-day -day lives now before we define probability we first need to learn the terms that are used to define probability so we have our first term as experiment by definition an experiment is any activity which we perform and which results in some uncertain outcome with that we have the second term that is the outcome and the outcome is defined as the result that appears when the experiment is performed let's understand these two terms with an example so i have a coin right here what will happen if i toss it of course it will fall back to the ground because of gravity but what will be the result of this i'll either get a head or a tail right and so tossing of the coin in this case is the experiment while the head and tail are two possible outcomes but isn't there also a possibility that the coin might just fall in such a way that it stands on one of its edges and neither of the faces come up well it is but it isn't just as likely as the coin showing a head or tail and when a possibility is extremely rare we don't consider it as an outcome of an experiment anyway how many times have you tossed a coin and saw it falling on its edge i am sure that the number is zero or very close to zero in a nutshell we say that when the experiment is tossing a coin the two outcomes are heads or tails also the possible outcomes of this experiment are equally likely this means that the chances of getting a head are the same as the chances of getting a tail and since we are not sure whether we will get a head or a tail we say that the experiment results in an uncertain outcome similarly if we rolled a die the experiment would be called rolling a die and the possible outcomes would be 1 2 3 4 5 or 6 so in this case there are six possible outcomes out of which any one can appear right so let's move on to the next new term which is called the favorable outcome or the event the favorable outcome or event is defined as the outcome of our interest or an outcome that we want suppose you and your friend have to work together on a project now one of you have to draw and the other one may have to paint let's say you hate painting and instead want to draw but even your friend wants to draw and not paint in this case you both decide to toss a coin to come to a fair conclusion and so you decide that if the coin shows a head you will draw and your friend will paint on the other hand if it shows a tail you will have to paint while your friend will draw so when you toss the coin you're hoping that the coin shows a head when it falls you want this experiment to have that outcome and so we say that the favorable outcome or event in this case is getting a head similarly while playing ludo every time we roll a die the possible outcomes are number from one to six so we write down s is equal to one two three four five six all in curly brackets and since the number of possible outcomes is six we say n of s is equal to six so when you want the die to show the number six in order to get your piece out on the board we say event b is getting the number six and we write this as b is equal to six where six is written in curly brackets and n of b in this case will be one 
Now let's say your piece is on the board and there you see that there is an opponent's piece of two places away from you. In fact, there's another opponent's piece that is four places away from you and the third opponent's piece is six places away from you. So if you roll the die and get a two, four or a six, you will be able to knock out one of your opponents. And this means that your favorable outcome in this experiments are 2, 4 and 6, which are all even numbers. Let's call getting even numbers, which are 2, 4 or 6 as the event C. So we write C is equal to 2, 4, 6 in curly brackets. Also, we get N of C is equal to 3 as there are three possible outcomes for this event. And those were all the terms that you needed to learn to define probability, which means we can now mathematically define probability. We define probability of an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes for the event that is E divided by the number of all possible outcomes of the experiment. Now we denote the probability of any event which is in this case E as P of that event that is P of E. So we say P of E is equal to N of E upon N of S. So let's solve a few problems based on probability. In the first problem, let's say we throw a die once. Now we have to find the probability of two events. The first is of getting a number greater than 4 and the second one is of getting a number less than or equal to 4. First, we will write down the sample space or the number of all possible outcomes for the die. We know that the possible outcomes when we roll a die are getting the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6, right? And so n of s will be equal to 6. Now we will find the probability of the first event which is getting a number greater than 4. So this is our favorable outcome or event and we will denote it by a. We then have a is equal to getting a number greater than 4. Now the numbers greater than 4 on a die are 5 and 6. So the number 5 and 6 are our favorable outcomes. By the way, will 4 also be included as an outcome? Think about it. In fact, just read the question again. We want a number greater than 4, not greater than or equal to 4. So now can you answer my question? That's right, 4 will not be included in the outcome of this event. And so A will only have the two numbers 5 and 6. That gives us N of A is equal to 2. Now, the probability of A is equal to N of A upon N of S. Substituting the values of N of A and N of S, we get P of A is equal to 2 by 6, which is equal to 1 by 3. And that is the probability of our first event. Now the next event is getting a number less than or equal to 4. And we have to find its probability. Here it is clearly mentioned that the desired outcome has to be less than or equal to 4. Right? So when we consider this event, the number 4 is also included. Along with that, we will have the favorable outcomes as the numbers less than 4. That are 1, 2 and 3. If we call this event as B, we will get B is equal to in curly brackets 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now B has 4 elements. So N of B is equal to 4. Therefore probability of B or P of B is N of B upon N of S which is equal to 4 by 6 and that equals to 2 by 3. So we can see that P of A that is the probability of getting a number greater than 4 is equal to 1 by 3. While P of B that is the probability of getting a number less than or equal to 4 is 2 by 3. Which amongst them is greater P of A or P of B? Clearly P of B is the greater one than P of A. And this means that if you roll a die and say that the number will be less than or equal to 4 you have higher chances of being right as compared to a person who says that the number will be greater than 4. So you see how probability helps you say the right things. 
Who knew the coins and dice that we see and use every day have so much mathematics behind them? Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.